the researchers actually listened in to individual nerve cells firing in the anesthetized cat. And he found that cells were very specific in direction. Some cells responded to one direction of movement and, and others to other direction of movement. Today, we celebrate the first draft of the Human Book of Life. All right, welcome back in this video. We're going to go over simple cells, complex cells, place cells, and grid cells of the visual system. This is going to be the first video of the neuroscience playlist that I'm going to be making. I'm um, starting off with the visual system because I got a comment earlier this week saying, hey, can you make a video on simple cells and complex cells? I was like, hell yeah, I can. But I'm going to add place cells and grid cells as well because I think it's also important. So here we are, the first video of the neuroscience playlist. Let's start off with the brief overview of the visual system pathway. First, light must enter the retina. After the retina, it's basically going to be exciting or inhibiting a bunch of cells like rods and cones, retinal ganglion cells, horizontal cells, and bipolar cells. I'm not going to go in depth on each of these cells in this video because if I did, it would take over an hour to go over them. But if you want me to make a specific video on these cells, let me know in the comments. I'll be more than happy to do it. I'll make a nice, easy video for you guys. After all these cells, it's going to basically synapse and excite the optic nerve, which is located in the back of the eye. This optic nerve is what's going to enter the brain. But when it enters the brain, it's going to do a little crisscross movement. So, for example, if light were to enter the left retina, it would activate the left optic nerve. And the left optic nerve would enter the brain, but it would go to the right-hand side of the brain. Okay? And then what's going to enter the lateral geniculate nucleus, which is located in the thalamus. The thalamus is a relay center for all the inputs throughout the body, right? The thalamus is what's deciding, okay, where are we gonna go next? It's the relay center. After the thalamus, the input's gonna go to V1, located in the occipital lobe. This is also called the primary visual cortex. The occipital lobe is located in the back of the brain. Now, you, it could stop here, but if there's further processing required, depending on what it is, what kind of light it is, it's going to go to other brain areas, like V3, V5, or the interrhinal cortex, or the hippocampus, the last two which we're going to talk about later in this video. All right, let's talk about simple cells and the CAT experiment. So there's a very famous experiment done. If you're a neuroscience major or you're interested in neuroscience, you're going to take the MCAT, you're interested in research like this, you should really know about this experiment. You should, it's very important. It was, it was like one of those landmark papers. There are two researchers, Hubel and Weisel. What they did is they wanted to investigate what cells are responding in the, visual, in the primary visual cortex. So what they did is they took a cat. This is a very sad experiment because this procedure was terminal. They, you know, after sacrificing the cat, I mean, as sad as it is, we have learned so much from this and it fueled so many other research about the visual cortex going on. But what they did is they took a cat and, it, and this cat was anesthetized, and they put it in a head frame, so it could not move its head. It's looking straight forward. What they did is they hooked up an electrode to V1, the primary visual cortex. Attached to this electrode was a speaker. This is genius. What they did is they were like, okay, we need a way to figure out if these cells are firing or not. And they were like, okay, what we can do is we can hook up a speaker and anytime the cells in the visual cortex fire, we're going to hear a noise, like a static noise. And that static noise is what you heard in the intro of this, of this video. Now, if they didn't hear anything, that means the cells were not firing. So what they did is they had an overhead projector and this projector was basically projecting onto the cat's retina, only one of the, only one of the eyes. So the cat was forced to see it, and then they would record what they saw. Well, they did this for days, and they didn't get anything. Let me show you what they did. So pretend uh, this is the, like the projector, and then that's not nice. Okay. And then what they did is they had like a sheet of paper, like a transparent paper, like this. And then they had like a black, uh, it was actually a dark circle, but I'm going to make it green here. Right, so they had a circle here. 
And what they did is they, they moved the circle around on this transparent piece of paper, right? Oops, whatever. <laughs> they moved the circle around and they realized they were getting nothing. No, no signal, no noise from the speaker, no matter where, whatever they did. This didn't work. So they're like, okay, it's time to wrap it up. So what they did is they were like, okay, we're going to give up now. Clearly what we're doing is not working. So one of the researchers took their hand on the transparent piece of paper and you know, moved it off the, the overhead projector. Well, when they got around here, so the, when, the, when the transparent paper was basically almost off you know, the, the screen here, right? they got a signal. They, heard, they started hearing a noise. So they're like, okay, that's very interesting. Why is this happening? And they realized the reason those, the cells were firing was not because of the, the dot that was on the transparent piece of paper. It was actually the edge, this edge of the transparent piece of paper was making the cat's V1 cortex fire, the cells. And they're like, wow, this is super interesting. Why is this happening? And this is when they found out simple cells. Simple cells are responsive to certain orientations of light and dark environments. So think about stripes on a zebra, okay? Think about this is like the receptive field of the cells. So let me draw you a black, uh, sorry, a white bar here, okay? Um, let's make me thinner. Yeah, good enough, okay. Let me just color this in. Okay, so what they were, what they found out is this, these cells, these simple cells in the visual cortex are responsive to light and dark, okay? So, for example, we have this white bar of light. This could be a, you know, a light that you're looking at, right? A bar of light, okay? And I wanna edit this. I wanna move it over to the white area, right? Of the zebra stripes. So think about these zebra stripes is the receptive field of the cells. Notice here, it's basically almost perfect, right? You, it looks, you know, the white, white bar is on the white strips, right? If this is the case, those simple cells are gonna be firing like crazy. They're gonna be super excited. They're very happy, right? The light bar is matching up with the white areas of the receptive field, okay? But now, if you were to rotate this so the white bar is covering the black areas of, this, you know, the, of the receptive field of simple cells, the cells do not like this. They don't like it, they won't fire, okay? So this means that light must be oriented in certain directions, and if, the, if it is so in a certain direction, and the simple cells like that, they will fire, okay? So notice that the white bar must be in a certain orientation, aligned in a very specific way, then they will fire, the simple cells will fire, okay? That's how it works. So once again, Notice, the, like right here, right? It's almost perfectly flush with the receptive field, the white receptive field, right? So think about simple cells have a white area and a black area, and they're all like zigzags. As long as the white area, the light that you're receiving is matching up with the white area of the receptive field of the simple cells, they will fire. But if they don't, uh, whoops. if they don't, so say if you have like a white, a white bar going over the black areas of the simple cells like this, they will not fire, they don't like that. Hopefully that makes sense. It's a little, it's a little tricky to understand, but uh, hopefully this was a good analogy. If it wasn't, then I can help you up in the comments. Now, these two researchers also recognize complex cells. Now they did not publish the complex cells because they're like, okay, we don't have enough data or you know, uh, of evidence, but they were correct. So complex cells are also located in V1, but they receive the inputs from simple cells. So after the simple cells are done firing, it's gonna synapse to complex cells. Now complex cells don't have light or dark preference. They don't care about the zebra pattern, okay? They don't, they're not like that. However, they care if the object is in motion in a certain direction, okay? So say if we have three cells here, three complex cells, located in V1. This cell prefers if the object is moving left and up. This cell prefers 
if it's going down, if the object or the light bar is going down. This one prefers, this cell prefers if it's going right and up. So for example, let's have this, this bar, this vertical bar here, okay? This object, it can be anything. And say if we were going to start moving it left and up, right? Like that. This cell is going to fire like crazy. It's going to be super happy. But these cells are not going to be happy. They won't be firing, okay? So it's detecting motion. So let's do, let's do this one. So say now it moves down, right? This one's going to be firing like crazy. This cell's going to, this complex cell is going to be firing like crazy. This one, not so much, and this one, not so much. It's not happy. So these complex cells, each cell has a preferred direction, okay? And it must be moving. So even if this, now say if this object was not moving, even though it's located pretty down, right? It's pretty close to the cell but it won't fire because it's not moving. It must be moving. If it just stands still like this, no complex cell will be firing. It has to be in motion, okay? Then there are place cells. Now, this is not located in V1. This is located in hippocampus. Hippocampus is involved in memory. So cells that are, these place cells only fire when you're in a familiar place. Okay, so say we have these two different place cells. We have these blue ones and these green ones. These blue ones will fire if you enter the bathroom, say your home bathroom, okay? These triangle ones will fire if you enter the kitchen area of your house, okay? So say you're deciding, okay, I'm gonna go to the kitchen. I'm gonna walk into the kitchen. These cells, these triangle place cells are gonna start firing. Because it's like, I remember this area. But the bathroom ones are not going to be firing because they're like, I'm not in the bathroom, right? I don't remember this. So place cells are literally place cells. There are specific cells that fire when you're in a certain place that you remember. Okay, so say if you go to school, like your, your university, for example, there's going to be a different cells that are going to be firing. Unlike the ones that you know, are dedicated to your home. Okay, that's pretty much it. Pretty easy, right? Then there are grid cells. Grid cells are found in the interrhinal cortex. They integrate distance, location, and position. It's basically cells that help you map out where you are and how far things are in your, in your environment. Because remember, you're looking in a 3D world. How do you know how far something is? It's through grid cells. So grid cells are coded by basically having a hexagonal, hex, hexagon, oh my God, a hexagon, okay, grid, like this, okay? And basically, it's kind of interesting. So say you have, uh, can I actually edit this? Oh, let's say, uh, that's not gonna work. Let me just, good enough, okay. Forget the other part, but say, you have your living room here, right? These grid cells are gonna form an imaginary grid of whatever you're looking at, right? It's gonna basically say, okay, how far are the stairs? How far is the sofa? How far is that lamp? Okay, that's how it works. It's basically integrating the distance, location, and position so you know how far something is without the, without the exact measurements, right? How do you know how far your blender is, for example, in your kitchen? That's basically grid cells. That is pretty simple. Just making a grid in your environment. Now, if you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. Until next time, later.